So let's recap on the prior stages before refinement of what we did to remove all of the damage that was on the Corsa. So uh, started off with tackling the deep isolated scratches with Trizac 3000. I then used microfiber with H9 um, on a rotary to cut away anything that was deeper and also correct the wet sanding. I then moved on to the Koch Kemi fine cut yellow pads with Menzerna 2500. I used that because I found that was a great lubricated polish that was going to help me with this single stage paint. I'm now moving on to the rotary, which is I'm going to be using that with the white Kartec pads and Essence to give me a really good gloss-like finish. Now, when I was going through these steps and processes, I found out that using DAs and anything with a throw to it, be it 12mm, 15mm throw, was creating DA marring. So testing different machines was really key to actually trying to get rid of this machine marring. And this is all due to the throw of a DA creating a higher scrub pattern, creating in micro marring on the paint and the as, as we know the rotary doesn't have any throw to it at all so this blew my mind um, and enabled me to get the exact finish i was looking for and the paint responded tremendously well so as you can see behind me there we've got the blue peril and i've set myself up ready for refinement so i'm going to take you over at a walkthrough of all my little setup the products i'm using and how we're going to achieve the results we want to achieve so I've got to set up my PE-2, <laughs> my PE-2, my PE-14-2 Rotary 150. Uh, that's made by Flex. I'll leave a link down in the description for that one. And I've got my 8-4. Yeah, there we go. Got that one right. Uh, 80, which is the smaller one, which is the 80 mil. And this is the 150 mil. I've got my Scan Grip Torch, my Multimatch 3. I've got an SGCB UK. Got that word right in. Um, which is the door stay, which will help me with the door jams. I've got uh, something from Carscope, which is the Pressel Sprayer. Now this is something that I'm really enjoying at the moment, the Pressel Sprayer. Uh, this has got my uh, Car Pro Eraser in it, which is really good. And the spray on this is great. It's the trigger that works twice as hard. So as soon as you pull back a, a release, it'll, it sprays twice, which is great. And I love this because the mist is so fine that when I'm, white, when I'm applying this to the car, it's such a fine mist that I'm not getting those big splatters and splodges all over the car when I'm wiping down and makes the application a little bit more even. I've got all my tools under here for the PXE, uh, all the attachments, all of those under there with the backing plates all under there. I've got my um, Chio microfiber back there, the 500 GSM, or is it the 350 GSM? I'm not sure, but I'll leave a link down in the description. And I've got my uh, Chion short pile microfiber too. I've got a pair of ear defenders, which is necessary when it comes to polishing. Although using the dual action ones are a lot louder than the rotary. They're a lot smoother, a lot steadier, not as, not as aggressive. And I'm only going to be using that on speed one. Next to that, I've got my pad washer from Lake Country. That is the Lake Country pad washer 4000. I'll put a little um, card up here so you can watch that video now if you want to uh, on the uh, unboxing and on the uh, on how to use it and what what it comes with so you can check that one out um, this is the poker premium trolley a great trolley which is just so handy when I'm working outside makes my life a lot lot easier for when I'm polishing nothing needs to be on the floor nothing's around me it's all there ready to go lots of stuff loads of room to stack stuff which is great and you've got room for attachments like this to add these attachments to the sides which is absolutely great so the rotary is sitting there lovely and again that then gives me six polishes room for six polishes a little bit excessive maybe but i do use all of them sometimes on certain cars especially when i'm trying to get around the car pretty quick i've got pads and polishes set up ready to go so i don't have to keep swapping out i'm ready to just grab and go grab and go especially when you're working outside and you've only got minimal light um, so the refinement choice is the Kartec pads. I'll leave a link in the description for these. Now, the difference is about the profile of these compared to the A pads and why I recommend using these for rotaries. It's because of the shape, the ergonomic design of them. They're designed to be more rounded and softer into the corners, so less digging in when it comes to polishing. Nice and soft, nice and smooth. And that also enables you for when you're using a rotary to tilt it up on its edges and sides to get into those corners, those edges, which is gonna make life a lot easier. They come in a 150 size and they also come in an 80 mil size, but anything smaller, you'll probably have to use the smaller pads that are the cone-like funnels, which is much easier to use. So, I also got my chargers underneath, which I can use if I'm charging the PXE. So that's all the equipment. 
And obviously the uh, polish I'm going to be using is Carpro Essence. Carpro Essence is a fantastic product. It is a bit like a primer. This primes the surface and has semi-permanent filling capabilities. And when left for four, and I would recommend leaving it for four hours before applying any ceramic coating. Um, as it says per the instructions. Um, this is a very easy product to use. It, it has got filling abilities, and on a car like this that's a lot older, it's a lot safer than me chasing perfection. Although, as you'll see in the videos, I have chased after this to perfection. So, but it's a great product that will wipe off really, really well. And obviously wipe off when it comes to refining is key. And some of the processes are having good clean pads, Cleaning, when it, when it comes to refinement, cleaning is so, so, so important. Important. Refining those pads, constantly blowing them out, not over-cycling, really key to keep them crisp and stuff. So I have a, a stash of pads here that I use when I get around the car, so I don't have to keep washing and rinsing out. That makes life a lot easier. When the pads start to get too soggy, that makes them a little bit heavier, and that can affect refinement as well. So lots of variables to work with. And of course, I'm working outside. It seems like it's spider season at the moment, so there's lots of spiders around, and I'm getting covered in cobwebs. So that's the process, that's what we're going with. So let me show you a little test section on the door, and let me show you what results we could achieve. So first of all, to make life easier, unlock the car. We're gonna be working on this rear quarter panel. So unlock, open the front door. Let's get this door open. And we grab ourselves our SGCB uh, UK bar. This is great because it has this little half moon attachment, which means it will sit comfortably on there. Uh, you can sometimes attach them, but these plastics are a little bit too high, a little bit too hard sometimes. So having that little half moon attachment really does make a difference. I have tried different types of these, um, and this one is definitely by far one I have used that I enjoy the most. So this will just pop in like that into the lock in there and as you can see you can put quite a substantial amount of pressure on that and you've got a good room to work with now this removes everything around from the edges so now you can attack the door quite easily before refinement i always make sure i dress all the trims uh, with the first coat that makes life a lot easier with uh, refinement polish there's not going to be too much problems with wiping off on these areas the abrasive isn't as strong it's a lot a lot softer a lot more oily and uh, won't do too much damage to any, any plastics with the uh, leftover residue. So let's get in. Let's start off with framing the door, as I call it. Let's frame the door. So what that means is we're going to be making sure that we blow this pad out first. As also, little plug, SGCB UK. <laughs> <laughs> links in the descriptions guys, links in the descriptions. <laughs> you know the drill. So, this has already been primed. Two micro dots there, it's gonna be more than enough. Now, hand speed and uh, hand speed and size of sections totally change when it comes to your, um, your polishing sets. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a framework around the door, we're gonna do all the edge work first and then finish off with the big pad after. So uh, I'll talk you through that as we go. Cord over the shoulder. Don't need that. And use some speed one. Just gonna double up the sets. So just think yourself as a robot. My test section's already been applied. So test sections when it comes to refining are as important, if not more important, than cutting. Doing a couple of sets of different pads and different polishes um, on a test section after you cut it is really important. Um, as you become more skilled, what you tend to do is as you're going around the car, you'll use a different compound and polish on each section and just get a visual of how it's working. So now grabbing my Chion short pile microfiber. What I tend to do is I like to fold these in half and into a four. 
holding this from the corner where the edges are, making sure this is the area that I'm holding. So this is a nice strong area. And then just slightly, lightly buffing off. And as you can see, this is an absolutely awesome wipe off. And because this product is a primer, the best thing about it is you don't need to IPA after. You can just wipe away, set that timer for four hours, and then you'll be ready for coating. And I have to say, this looks absolutely gorgeous. What a result. Even back in 2003 when these were created, that paint system and paint has come on so far in the last 18 years. Like it still looks absolutely stunning. Now the biggest thing and the biggest problems you've got with this kind of paint system is it's flat blue, right? So there's no metallic in this at all. So if you haven't started your polishing career yet, there is a huge difference between flat colours and metallic colours. Metallic will hide a lot more haze and it will hide a lot more um, machine marring because of, its, uh, because of its design. And when it comes to flat colours, when you're booking them in, if you're a detailer, as you well know, you'll need to uh, advise your client into a two stage because if you have to cut anything out, you're gonna create a lot of haze a lot of machine marring and that's going to take you two steps or three steps or in this case four <laughs> because as we're doing this for YouTube I want to take this to the absolute maximum because that's what YouTube asks for no messing about no tickling no faking the whole nine yards Always feel free to leave comments down in the comment section, guys. And there's plenty of more videos on this. This is uh, this is one part of the uh, of the of the story. The whole series is going to be up on the YouTube channel. So let's get you stuck in. No editing. Straight in. Let's get the torch out. Let's see what we've created. So as you can see, <laughs> I think you can see me clear enough. I hope that's coming through loud and clear. This is filmed in 4K, so I'm hoping you're going to get the opportunity to see the results. Uh, one thing I'll tell you about is the fact that this, um, this light here, this light source, is too bright. So always when you're dealing with these colours, switch down to the swell finder, because what you'll get to see is the real true reflection. And that's something that I've come up against with this paint system, is actually learning about it as we go, is what lights are the best lighting to actually spot the machine marring. And as you can see, there's still gonna be some stuff left behind because this car's 18 years old and there'll be no paint left. But I have taken this for a four stage prep and if you'd have seen right up here, there is just slight little nicks like this. I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick this up. Is the lighting? But it's just there. But to the naked eye, you're not going to see anything. But the gloss levels, as you can see, look absolutely outstanding. 